Well, welcome everyone to a quick tutorial on how to stack star images in, with a program called Sequator. Uh, this is a Windows based program and it is free to download. I'll be sure to put a link in the description. So if you need to stack your star images, personally, I'd say it's a very good choice of programs to use. Okay, so to get this started, uh, I've got Sequator open here. And up here we have uh, the different places where you can put your images. Uh, and then down here we have the different things you can do to your images. So I'm going to open my folder that has uh, my star images in it. I've got 10 of them. Uh, Sequator does read most RAW files, so if you want to use RAW files, that's okay. Personally, I like to do a quick initial like, exposure fix or something in Lightroom, but you don't have to do that. You can work straight from RAW. So with my 10 images selected, I'm going to drag it over to Sequator and drop it on star images here. And then make sure it's going into the star images category and hit OK. Then if you do have any black images you shot for noise reduction, uh, you'd put them into noise images. Uh, but I don't have any of those at the moment, so not going to put those in. And then uh, for output, you need to designate your output file. So double click that and I'm just going to name this finished. And click save and now there's a designated output file. Okay, so to start this off, uh, we want to click this Composition Align Stars first. And with Align Stars selected, uh, I normally choose Freeze Ground because that seems to work out fantastic. And I leave Selective checked. Uh, if you have Selective checked, it will remove any comets or meteors or airplanes that are going through your scene. Uh, if you don't have that checked, obviously those are going to show up. So kind of depending on what you actually want to have happen. Okay, then the next thing we want to do is click Sky Region. And that is where we get to mask the sky. So you get this big circle. Uh, the mouse wheel will make it smaller or bigger. And you click and the left click will allow you to draw and you want to color in your sky. So I always do just kind of a rough little thing like that, and then I make it smaller and kind of fine tune this. Sequator is pretty good at being able to uh, get closer to items so you don't have to mask right up to the edge of things it will figure it out for the most part uh, when it comes to trees and bushes you definitely do not want to go over them at all if you go over them the sequator will blur it out and things will get really weird with your photo but so with this now uh, the other thing is if you right click your mouse you can erase things so I'm going to come up and just make sure that none of these little trees are covered. I uh, don't want any little branches. don't want to be actually on top of this building here. So I'm going to come up like that. And to me, this is looking like a pretty good mask that's going to work out. So now that we've got that done, uh, the next thing, uh, this reduce distortion effects. If you right click it, you'll have the option at Tele or complex. Tele is for telephoto and complex is for wide angle. Since this is a wide angle shot, I'm going to choose complex. And then I would always remove dynamic noise. Be sure to turn that on. And then you can, depending on how you took your photo or what, uh, you can enhance the starlight. I'm going to pull this up to strong to enhance the starlight as much as possible because I really want those stars to stand out. So with those options selected, uh, that is what I would normally do and recommend as a starting point using Sequator. So I'm going to hit start and process this. Okay, so after a little bit of time, Sequator has finished processing this. 
Uh, so once it's all done, you hit close and then it will load in the image it processed. I love what it did with the stars here. As you'll notice, my foreground, it's really dark. So if you have this situation happen, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, first off, uh, you can turn auto brightness on. When it's processing, it'll automatically determine the brightness of your photo and try to get your photo exposed a little bit better. So I'm gonna change the output name to auto brightness. And gonna click save, and then I'm just gonna start and do this again. It saves all of your settings you'd used previously, so there's no harm in doing a couple copies of an image and figuring out which one you like best in the end. Okay, and yet again, we've finished processing, so I'm gonna hit close and see what happened. And as you'll notice, my foreground is much brighter on this one. Uh, the stars are still there, the entire image is a little bit brighter, but much brighter, much better. In my opinion, on this particular image, this is probably where I would want to stop. Uh, but just to display something else, I'm going to come up here and change the output name and change this to HDR for high dynamic range. And I'm going to click save and then with auto brightness still on, I'm going to turn on high dynamic range and process this again. This is going to brighten up my foreground even more. And, you know, sometimes I like this effect, sometimes I don't. Kind of a matter of personal opinion and the specific image. Okay, and we are done processing again. So I'm going to hit close. And as you'll notice, it is even brighter. The shadows are a little bit lighter. Uh, everything is very see-through. It did, in my opinion, it over in the sky. I mean, that'd be really easy to bring back down in a program like Photoshop or something, so this might be a good way to go. It would leave you with that really bright exposed foreground, but to me, this almost looks like daytime, so, you know, not really what I want a nightscape image to look like. But if you have an image where you need to use this, by all means, it's definitely good at moments. So with that being said, I'm not really sure what else to say about Sequator other than there is this merge four pixels. If you have a really grainy photo or something that you took at an extremely high ISO, if you turn that on, it'll make your image a quarter of the size, uh, but it will take four pixel pixels and merge them together into one. And doing that will reduce a ton of noise if you shot your image at extremely high ISOs. Okay, so I guess that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. I, I'm going to very quickly display all of the images I edited here so that you can see a comparison between the different methods of uh, stacking stars with Sequator. Well, I guess that is going to wrap up this video, and I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you still have any questions, uh, be sure to ask them in the comments section, and I will do my best to respond. Uh, but yeah, as always, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you want to see more content like this, and hopefully I will see you next time.